Welcome back to Randon Real Estate. I am Greg Rand, your host on 77 WABC and WABCRadio.com. And we've been talking for the last little while about the economy and the housing market um, and uh, what they're doing down in Washington. But we're going to jump in now and focus on how you can make money. You know, this crisis has an, a flip side, and the flip side is the opportunity. And everybody knows that, Lori. You know, everybody gives that lip service. They always say, oh, yes, well, within crisis is opportunity. But they don't always realize that when you're in the middle of the crisis and emotionally and psychologically you're being impacted by the crisis, that's the time when you have to recognize, okay, everybody else feels like me. And that right there, that's the opportunity because you may be among the only people that have the guts and the wherewithal to shake that off and go and do something about it. So um, I'm going to share with you a little bit of analysis and tell you kind of what I do and how I do it. Uh, I'm the CEO of a company called Own America. And Own America is a company dedicated to real estate investing for the everyday person, all right? Not big ticket investing in commercial real estate in high rises and malls, but people just like you and me who can secure their financial future by buying a couple of properties, by accumulating a portfolio, small or even very big, but by doing it the right way. For, for investment purposes, not for residential not purposes for, living for their own. Okay, yeah, got not it. home ownership. I mean, I'm a big home ownership guy, but Own America is about real estate, the asset class which, by the way, outperforms stocks, outperforms bonds, outperforms Apple stock. It outperforms everything because it's American real estate, hence the name Own America. Um, and what I teach people is what I learned from working with professional investors, the big dogs, and how they approach it. And the very first lesson that you have to internalize is the idea that the real estate market is a gigantic, slow-moving behemoth. And unlike Wall Street, which has an ever shorter time span, Wall Street has a much, I'm sorry, Main Street, real estate has a much longer time span. So just like on Wall Street, they zoom all the way in. You know, they look at a stock curve and they see it going up and down, up and down, up and down with every split second change in the trading day. And they trade on those ups and downs. And it becomes a microsecond kind of a timing thing. In real estate, you do the opposite. You zoom all the way back. Mm -hmm. You want to see those shifting plates of earth. What's happening long term, geological time, okay? So before a professional investor ever actually picks a property or starts searching for properties, first thing they do is they pick a market. <clears throat> and so what I want to do is I want to show you how to go about researching and understanding the, the nature of a real estate market by jumping way the heck out of the New York area and focusing on something 2,000 miles away and showing you that you actually probably already know a fair amount about this just by being alive and, and listening to the news. And if you listen to this show, that means you have an interest in these kind of topics. So I want to focus on Las Vegas and tell you the first things that I would look at as to whether Las Vegas is a good investment or a bad investment. Now, we know that South Florida, Las Vegas, Arizona, um, California, and uh, Michigan, Detroit in particular, those are the five uh, biggest, hardest hit markets in the housing crisis right now. They were the first places to go through a mar the market correction where the prices were coming down. They're the first places where the foreclosure wave actually hit back in, I think it was 05, 06, when property values first began declining in those places. And then, therefore, um, that decline in values began to precipitate people walking away from houses. Um, but what you look at Las Vegas and you say, okay, what is the driving force be be behind Las Vegas's meteoric growth? And here's what you find out. You learn that Las Vegas was... Uh, the population trends in Las Vegas, the population almost doubled over a 10-year period. So think of population as the first step. That's the first, first plate of earth you want to focus on because people, last time I checked, they like living indoors, mm -hmm. okay? And so <laughs> they're either going to own the home or you're going to own the home and they're going to rent it from you. But if there are more people coming to a place, the real estate market in that place is going to benefit because population drives demand for real estate. Demand for real estate drives property values. And so what was happening in Las Vegas is that the, the growth of the tourism industry in Las Vegas was going crazy. And so population grew as that job base and then un that, that employment base grew. This is what was happening during the boom. So a lot of overdevelopment, a lot of building of both high rises on the strip, but also neighborhoods out in the outskirts mm -hmm. to house all these people that were going to work there. And um, then the bubble burst and the Las Vegas real estate market, which not surprisingly was really attacked by speculators. You know, I mean, it's, it's a cliche to talk about people who are gambling in Las Vegas. There was a gambling atmosphere in the real estate market in Las Vegas because so much of the new housing that was being built was being bought by people who weren't going to live there and who weren't going to rent it out to anybody else. 
They were speculators. They were buying it with the intent to flip it as soon as they took possession of it. Mm -hmm. All right, a speculator adds no value. A speculator's game is to try to catch timing and only timing. So I can buy this house for $400,000. By the time they finish putting it all together and building it, it's worth $100,000 more. I flip it to the next sucker. I'm, I'm sorry. I flip it to the next buyer who comes along. <laughs> and the problem is when everybody else has the exact same business plan, right. there's not enough suckers to be there. And when the market turns, it's kind of like playing you know, hot potato. You get stuck um, with the hot potato. Isn't Florida similar to that? Florida is similar to that. And so when you look at that and you say, that's a really tough situation. It's ugly. And in fact, population trends in Las Vegas right now is they lost 70,000 residents this year so far already. So the population trends are going the other direction. So Vegas is a bad bet, right? I'm not so sure. Because what has been driving people to Las Vegas over the last 20, 30 years? A couple of things. The growth of that entertainment industry. Now, what's interesting about entertainment is that, of course, right now it's taken a hit. But you know what's interesting? The, you know what industries did the best during the Great Depression? The Great alcohol. Depression, alcohol was one of them, right? Partying. In fact, they, they went so well that they made it illegal. But also you had um, the movie theater industry. That was when movie theaters popped up in every town. The radio industry mm -hmm. really blossomed as an information and entertainment resource at that time. So Vegas has something going for it that even in bad times is still always in demand. It may not look like it right now because they had overbuilt but it's still there and still moving. But I think the most important thing about Las Vegas is the migration trend out of California, all right? California just had an election where they elected Jerry Brown, and they basically elected to keep going the way they were going, which is increasing taxes, increasing the burden on companies. And what happened in Las Vegas is Nevada elected the exact opposite. They elected a guy by the name of, eh, I don't have his name in front of me. Anyway, he was a candidate who was all about reigning in government spending and going out after California's businesses and recruiting them. Mm -hmm. Now, those of us in New York know that when New York lost their head over the last several decades and overspent and overburdened businesses, who were the beneficiaries of that? Connecticut, Connecticut. and New uh, Jersey. New Jersey, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Businesses took off and said, this is too easy because I can just move my workforce to a new office building. They can keep it, stay in their same houses because they can commute to these other states. So... I think one of the biggest drivers of growth in Las Vegas is they're going to diversify their employment base. They're never going to want to be so overly de dependent on entertainment and tourism in the future. So they're going out after corporations to do all kinds of other things, attracting them out there. It's a you know, five-hour drive or something from L.A. And so the migration trends from California to Nevada, which created Nevada and Las Vegas' boom in the very first place, is going to basically save it from the situation now. Home prices in Las Vegas are down to 2,000 or 2,001 levels, which means the entire uh, bubble has been erased. Okay, so all that craziness is now gone. It's erased from history. Okay. We're back down to that point again. And another interesting fact is that nationally, 66% of all households are owner-occupied. In Vegas, it's only 60%. 40% of all households are renters. So what does all this stuff mean when it comes together? Number one, there is some extreme short-term pain which should get your attention if you're trying to find an opportunity for upside. Number two, there is a long-term migration trend that is only getting stronger because of California going to Nevada. Number three, you have population going down but probably going to be increasing. And number four, um, you've got a market that basically has something going for it that is always in demand. So let me just ask you real quick because mm -hmm. we only have like 30 seconds left. Buy or not buy in Las Vegas right now? If you are prepared to hold it for 10 years, you buy in Las Vegas right now. It's a good buy. If you're going to buy it and rent it out. If you're going to flip it, go someplace else. Awesome. But if you're going to buy and hold, and that's the way the professional investors pick their markets. My name is Greg Rand. This is Rand on Real Estate. Thank you so much, Laura, for being with oh, me. Oh, it's great to be here. My website is ownamerica.com. Come on there. Tell me I'm crazy. Join me on the blog, and I will see you next time. Thanks for listening.